Hello friends, welcome to this YouTube video program. Uh, friends, we are discussing about uh, uh, the concept and uh, uh, you can say uh, the content point uh, uh, that has been uh, you know, given in different uh, units uh, of different courses of MA education program uh, of Indira Gandhi National Open University. We have uh, discussed uh, uh, some of the courses earlier and presently uh, we are discussing uh, in the second course that is MES012 Education Nature and Purposes. Okay, so this is one of the important course uh, which deals about uh, the nature and purposes, the curriculum and other aspect of education. So uh, uh, now we are discussing, uh, you know, the units in block four. Okay, so block four of MES012. In block four, you'll find that uh, different aspects of curriculum, the concept and aspects of curriculum uh, are the major theme of discussion. And uh, in this block already, we have discussed unit 13. Uh, uh, but now we are uh, in this program, we'll discuss the next unit that is unit 14 of block four of MES012. Uh, the title of unit 14 is foundations of curriculum. So here in this program, we'll discuss concept of foundations of uh, you know uh, curriculum so friends uh, when we construct in our earlier program we have discussed that uh, every curriculum is having its approach okay so when we design a curriculum so that curriculum per adopt uh, as per certain approach so uh, it may be a behavioral approach it may be a humanistic approach it may be an intellectual approach okay so here uh, we'll discuss that what are the other aspects of, uh, that cut or that become the foundation stone for uh, you can say developing the curriculum. Uh, in this unit, the, the major content points that we'll discuss that is first is the philosophical foundation uh, and curriculum. Then further we'll discuss about the sociological foundation of curriculum. Then of course we'll discuss the psychological foundations of curriculum. So friends, when we talk about the perspectives of education, uh, you know, education as a subject, education as a discipline. So definitely, uh, you know, uh, uh, we have discussed earlier and uh, you have understood that uh, uh, every discipline is having, or uh, at the present case, so far as the discipline of education is concerned, you will find that the discipline of education is having a philosophical construct, a philosophical perspective and context. Uh, uh, this is also uh, a socio a socio political uh, perspectives and context is also there in education, and further uh, psychological uh, you know perspective and context is also uh, there in education because because uh, the theories and principles, the norms and uh, uh, you know uh, the practices of psychology, practices of sociology, practices of political science at the same time philosophy that we implement in education so that's why education is called as uh, an applied branch of knowledge and applied uh, applied branch of discipline okay so the you can say uh, the theories uh, uh, we take from different areas different areas of knowledge different other disciplines just like your sociology psychology at the same time philosophy and we practice it in education so all the theories that got practiced in education so that's why when we develop a curriculum when we construct a curriculum so these are the you can say foundations of the curriculum means the philosophical foundation uh, sociological foundation and the psychological foundation so we'll try to understand that uh, uh, how these three perspectives or three foundations uh, are used in designing the curriculum in developing the curriculum so friends when we talk about philosophical foundation uh, of curriculum so uh, you can just say that uh, when we talk about the philosophical thoughts of education or philosophical schools of education or schools of thought just like the idealism naturalism pragmatism okay so you'll find that uh, when you design the curriculum such principles are reflected okay you'll find that uh, the curriculum uh, might have designed as per the idealistic schools of thought as per the naturalistic schools of thought as for uh, the pragmatist school of thought. Okay, so when we talk about idealistic school of thought, you find that the ideas and ideals. Okay, so that got reflected the spiritual education, and uh, uh, you can say uh, 
uh, uh, relations between teacher and students, the disciplinary practices uh, uh, in the school, in the uh, in teaching learning process. So that is very rigid in nature. Okay. So that's why here in idealistic schools of thought, you'll find that uh, you know a rigid process at the same time. Uh, uh, you know uh, the things that got practiced you will find that very rigidly uh, that got practiced in a gurukul system you can say that the content are translated the content are uh, transacted to the students with certain norms with certain principles with certain uh, methods but when you talk about you know, the uh, uh, naturalistic uh, school of thought uh, if the curriculum is designed as per, uh, if the foundation of curriculum is as per the naturalistic thought, you will find that uh, you know the child is given optimum uh, uh, importance uh, uh, you know in designing the curriculum. Okay, so here uh, you know the child has been uh, uh, child is considered as the center point as the center point uh, in curricular uh, uh, in curriculum development. Means means when you will implement the curriculum. So everything will be designed in the curriculum, the content and the other experiences um, uh, uh, will be included in the curriculum as per the need, interest and abilities of the learner. And friends, when we talk about the pragmatist curriculum, you will find that, you know, uh, every time the things are changing, the society is changing, the norm of the society, the societal practices is changing. So that's why keeping in consideration of the changing nature of the society. Keeping in consideration of change of knowledge, knowledge structure, change of science and technology, change of practices in our day-to-day -day life. Okay, so you will find that uh, you know the curriculum is also designed accordingly. So that's why within a definite depth of period, maybe five years, maybe ten years, that uh, you know uh, this has been realized that curriculum should be changed. So friends, when we talk about different schools of thought. Okay, the philosophical schools of thought may be idealism, naturalism, pragmatism. So, uh, if the curriculum is designed as per the pragmatist thought, you will find that uh, you know uh, uh, certain new things that has been incorporated in the curriculum. Okay, so uh, certain innovations, certain changes that has been included in the curriculum, and 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 if it is designed as per the idealistic schools of thought, accordingly the curriculum transaction methodologies. The curriculum transaction strategies that got highlighted in the curriculum. Okay, so let me give you one example. If the curriculum is designed as per the pragmatist approach, you will find that the project method, okay, the inquiry based method, uh, uh, the problem solving method that got highlighted in the curriculum for transacting content uh, from teacher to the students. And uh, uh, if the curriculum is designed as per the idealistic schools of thought, you will find that uh, you know the things that has been uh, 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 that got focused in the curriculum. That means how the teacher will teach the students. So teacher may use here uh, a, a type of teacher-centric method, not a student-centric method. Just like uh, 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 you can say a lecture method, okay, a discussion method. But when we talk about the naturalistic schools of thought, you will find that. Children are the, the, the students are given importance, so that's why child-centered method, playway method, and other types of uh, demonstration method, hands-on activities method. Uh, so where the children will engage themselves, they will realize the things, they will engage their sense organs for uh, you know uh, 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 getting the experiences at the same time understanding the phenomena. Okay, so that's why accordingly the methods, accordingly the disciplinary practices that got practiced in the curriculum so that's why here when you talk about the philosophical foundations of education you will find that uh, you know such things are reflected in curriculum at the same time uh, when you talk about uh, you know uh, 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 you know uh, 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 the thinkers okay the concept and principles of education that has been given by the indian at the same time the western thinkers of education great personalities you will find that that also uh, 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 gets reflected in our curriculum. Just like when we talk about, uh, you know, uh, let's see Aurobindo's integral education. So you will find that uh, uh, the integral education system, that is the physical education, vital education, spiritual education, mental education, psych education, that gets reflected in our education system, that gets reflected 
you know uh, in our curriculum okay so the physical development of the child spiritual development of the child intellectual or the mental development of the child at the same time when you talk about the psych development that means social and emotional development of the child and at the same time when we talk about the vital uh, development of the child uh, so that talks about uh, you can say the development of the sense organ so how we engage our sense organ <clears throat> for understanding the things experiencing the things okay so that's why uh, here you will find that uh, if integral curriculum is developed and definitely all such things should be reflected in the curriculum and if the curriculum is developed as per the uh, as per gandhiji's or mahatma gandhi's concept of education that is craft centered education or the basic education or the vardhan scheme of education you will find that how craft is integrated in the education system you will find that in nep 2020 such things are given importance okay so this has been highlighted this has been focused in nep 2020 that how to reduce the curriculum load so after reducing the curriculum load so how to or uh, you can say fill that gap by integrating certain craft by integrating certain uh, you can say skill based education so that education every stage of education will based upon certain skill orientation certain competency based okay so that's why uh, that's called as the graduated skill means after completion of the school education what skill you, you will acquire so that's why when we talk about gandhi ji's vardhan scheme of education so you will find that if your curriculum is designed accordingly so this is the foundation of the curriculum that that is uh, you can say the uh, uh, crafts the, how to design the craft how to uh, integrate the craft with the content how to integrate craft with mathematics how to integrate different types of skill and craft education with uh, social science subjects with languages also okay with science science subjects also so that is also another part so accordingly you can give the example of spiritual education by rabindranath tagore okay so how to develop uh, the aesthetic values okay so how to uh, incorporate how to integrate different values democratic values aesthetic values moral values empathy okay interpersonal relationship with our curriculum so that's why this is also another important aspect uh that you can say that is the foundation for constructing the curriculum developing the curriculum so every curriculum is having a philosophical pursuit a philosophical context and perspective okay it may be different schools of philosophy at the same time it may be based upon the vision the concept of education that has been deduced uh, uh, deduced from different uh, you can say philosophers different educationist different thinkers maybe eastern maybe indian or western then further friends will discuss about uh, you know the sociological foundation of education when we talk about sociological foundations uh, foundation of education this is another important part uh, of this unit you see uh, uh, we consider that school is a miniature of the society the practices of the school uh, that reflect that reflects our societal practices means what is going on in the society is the same thing also also happening in our school system in a school you will find that the children uh, the activities uh, in a school you will find that children are coming in contact with other friends with their peers with their groups okay so they are doing activities in their group okay so they are grooming themselves they are understanding them, themselves they are also understanding others okay so that's why uh, you know in a group living what should be the behavioral structure what should be the nature of behavior uh, of uh, of an individual child so a child learns from the school because we consider that school is also just like a society it is a miniature of the society so that's why friend here uh, what we are discussing uh, the sociological foundations of education you will find that uh, the concept of a society after all uh, when we develop a curriculum Uh, uh, you will find that uh, the output of the curriculum, the product of the curriculum, is uh, is for the society because further that will be implemented in the society. Okay, the individual are, are part of the society, are member of the society. So the knowledge, understanding, application, skills that they will gain, the anal critical analysis that they will gain from the academic system, from the uh, uh, from their schooling, from their education, further they have to apply it. 
in different social activities. So that's why friends, when we talk about uh, society, so you will find that this is also a foundation. This is also a, a, a you can say, uh, such principles should be uh, uh, followed in developing the curriculum. So that's why our curriculum that reflects our culture, our curriculum that reflects our societal practices, our curriculum that reflects the tradition. You will find that uh, in NEP 2020, this has been highlighted that when we design the curriculum, maybe a national curriculum or maybe local based curriculum, okay. So you will find that uh, the local culture, the local practices, substantially that should be included in the curriculum. So that, so that the young learners, the young children, they should understand the traditions which is going on in the society, okay, the happenings which is going on in the society, the value based of the society, the culture of the society, okay, the richness of the society, the diversity of the society, okay, so uh, how to achieve the unity among the diversity. So, first of all, they should understand the diversity, the beauty of diversity at the same time, how to achieve the unity. So, that's why sociological foundation is one of the important foundation for constructing, for developing the curriculum, okay, without understanding the society and the, uh, the construct of the society, the nature of the society, then you can't develop a good curriculum. So that's why curriculum, uh, uh, you can say, uh, the, when you design the curriculum, the social things, the social practices, it should be reflected. Further friends, uh, the another foundation of uh, uh, curriculum construction that's called as the psychological foundation psychological context and perspective you see when we design the content it should be uh, content in a subject in a curriculum you will find that certain psychological principles should be used to be followed just like uh, we call that maxims of education we proceed from uh, uh, example to rules you can say from particular example to uh, an universal universal rules okay from general to <clears throat> from general to particular, okay, or from particular to general, you will find that uh, when it from easy to complex, you can say okay, in inductive method, in deductive method. So we use certain maxims of education, and at the same time, <clears throat> being a teacher uh, um, or uh, uh, or being a student, also you will uh, analyze that the content that you have studied in different stages of education, okay, at the primary stage, at the secondary stage, at the senior secondary stage, you will find that the content that has been included uh, in the curriculum, that curri that content is having certain base, certain psychological base, means, means the curriculum or the content point that has been included in a particular subject at the primary stage is to some extent easy in nature in comparison, uh, uh, in comparison with the secondary stage in comparison with the senior secondary stage and when you see after school education when uh, uh, you know the young students enter in the higher education system you will find that rigorously rigorously they are undergoing with different theories and the principles of different aspects of knowledge so here you, you will find that the knowledge is going means means more detailed things they are um, uh, studying at the higher stages of education because because their mental horizon, their abstract thinking and other types of skills, analysis, synthesis, critical analysis skills they have developed in course of time. So this is aligned with the growth and development of the child. Okay, so mental development, what type of mental development uh, happened in a particular age, in a particular level. Okay, so you'll find that the mental development at the primary stage and mental development at the secondary stage is different. So accordingly, certain psychological rules, psychological principles, theories are there for designing the curriculum. Further, uh, you know, how to motivate when you transact the curriculum, certain psychological principles are also applied. Okay, what methods are you supposed to use? How to motivate the child? How to inspire the child? How to understand the personality of the child? Okay, so how to understand the attitude of the child, intelligence of the child? So these are the men these mental attributes how to measure these mental attributes, okay, so because without understanding the child, you cannot uh, teach them, you cannot deal them, you cannot develop uh, a good curriculum. So that's why friends, when we talk about, you know, the, found, uh, the psychological foundation of curriculum, so definitely you can say the learning theories and the curriculum means how to design curriculum as part of the heuristic approach, 
as per the cognitivist approach and now we are talking about the constructivist approach. You will find that as per NCF 2005, even if in NCF uh, in NEP 2020, constructivist approach is given top priority. Means how to design our curriculum as per the constructivist approach. Means how to use the learning experiences that uh, uh, the life experiences that the learner have already achieved. How to use such experiences in the teaching learning process, and how to uh, uh, you can say engage the learners. Uh, by using their earlier experiences with <coughs> the new knowledge, with the new content. So that is a, a part of, uh, you can say, the constructivist approach. So here you will find that when we talk about uh, uh, psychological foundations, so you will find that the curriculum that we design, that we design as per certain principles, certain approach, a certain psychological theories. So that psychological theories may be a behavioristic approach, may be a cognitivist approach, or maybe a constructivist approach. So at present, we are talking about the constructivist approach. Further, uh, you can say transfer of knowledge, how knowledge transfer from one situation to other situation. Okay, so uh, what are the principles that works for transferring knowledge, okay, for transferring information, for transferring uh, or for understanding, uh, how the child develop understanding. Okay, so what techniques supposed to use? So that is also another part of this unit. To understand that how knowledge transfers okay at the same time memory and retention you can say you can say that means it may uh, the content that uh, we are teaching to the students how that got retained by the students whether uh, after after going through a particular content whether they're forgetting that content or some extent of content some extent of knowledge that got retained in the mind of the students that is also another part of Curriculum. So that's why when we talk about curriculum, so all these principles and theories of psychology that also we use. So keeping in consideration of all these principles, we develop the curriculum. Then further we can say the basic human needs and curriculum. So here also when we design the curriculum for the humanistic approach, so here we design the curriculum as per the need, interest and abilities, aptitude, intelligence of the learners that could achieve, that could attend in a particular uh, uh, level of development of the human child. So friends, uh, this unit is a very uh, beautiful unit. It talks about uh, the perspectives and context of construction of the curriculum. That's called as the foundations of the curriculum. So mostly three foundations, three types of foundations or perspectives uh, we consider for designing a curriculum in education. It may be school education or for higher education. That is the philosophical foundation, the sociological, socio-political foundation, at the same time the psychological foundation. I think you can better understand this unit. You are supposed to go through the, all the content points that has been included uh, in this unit and after watching this video and when you link it with the content that, is, that has been developed in this unit, so you can better understand. So friends, in our next program we will discuss other unit, other unit uh, of this course, uh, already two units of block four of MES012 we have completed and in our next program we will discuss uh, the next unit that is unit 15. Thank you.